If you have worked with SharePoint before, then this is probably a familiar site. Your SharePoint site files. And usually there are two columns right next to these files shown by default. The modified column and the modified by column. Both of these columns show when and by who this file or folder was modified last. But did you know that you can add more columns to your SharePoint sites that can display a bunch of different information types? In this learning, we're going to look at the most useful columns that you can add. You can add a column by pressing the Add Column button. A menu now opens that shows you the most important column options and a brief description of what they do. Once you add a column, you get a few default options for each one of them. These options revolve around changing the name under which this column will be displayed and around adding a description of what this column is for. If you want to add values to columns, you can do that by clicking Edit in Grid View in the toolbar and by clicking inside of the cell in the column that you want to add something to. This works very similarly to Excel and you can even drag this corner out to the cells underneath it to apply the selected content to the other files. Super handy. Let's talk about the text column first. This column allows you to add a string of text to a file or folder. You can put in anything you want. Multiple lines of text works in a very similar way to the regular text column. Only this column allows you to add multiple lines of text instead of just one in case you need to put in more information. With the choice option, you can assign a series of choices to a SharePoint file. This is a great way to label files and folders. You can rename these choices by clicking on them and you can change their color by clicking the Artist Palette button. And you can add more choices by clicking the Add Choice button. You can set this column up so any user can add their own choice by clicking Can Add Values Manually. And by clicking More Options, you also have the option to display options using radio buttons or a drop-down menu and you can allow multiple choices to be assigned to a single file. The Date and Time column allows you to add a date and a time to a file or folder. You can assign what date and time to display yourself once you fill the column in. You can also choose to include or to not include the time, and to use a friendly format instead of the more detailed format. As a default value, you can set it up to be today's date, a different date that you can choose, or nothing at all. With the Person column, you can display people next to files. This is a handy way to assign files to different people and in a glance see what files belong to who. If you tick the Allow Selection of Groups option, you can even select whole groups to be displayed here, and you can even enable or disable profile images. And if you tick Allow Multiple Selections in the More Options section, you can even add multiple people to a file or folder. The Number column allows you to add a number with a symbol in front or behind it. You can choose what symbol to use yourself and enter a default value. You can also use a calculated value as a default value. This means that you can add a formula to calculate what gets inserted here and how it gets inserted. You can use conditional formulas, date and time formulas, mathematical formulas and text formulas. You can click the I next to use calculated value to find out more about what exact formulas you can use here. You can also choose the number of decimal places to use and in the more options section you can even turn on the thousand separator and add a minimum value and a maximum value. The yes no value column allows you to add a check mark to a file that you can check or uncheck in the edit grid view mode. This is handy to show if a file has been approved or not for example. You can also change the default value. With the hyperlink column, you can add a link to a file that can point to anything on the internet like a YouTube video, a Wikipedia article, or even another file. Fileception. Just fill in the link that this column will point to, and then the text that it will be displayed as. And there you go! If you don't enter a display text, the full link itself will be displayed. The currency column allows you to add a currency and a price to a file. For this column, you can change the number of decimal places, you can change the currency format to any format you'd like, and in the More Options section, you can add a thousand separator and insert a minimum and a maximum value. Lastly, with the Location column, you can add a real-life location to a file. Keep in mind that every detail you select in this list will turn into its own column in the file view. Into the column that appears, enter the name of a place or the address. 
Once you select a location, the other columns will automatically be filled in with the relevant information. And those are what we think are the most useful and important columns that you can easily add yourself right now. There are more columns you can check out if you'd like to that may be useful for you, like the image, manage metadata, and lookup columns. But with the ones we explained in this video, we can already transform your basic looking SharePoint documents library into a powerful tool for you and your coworkers. Your team's files are also in SharePoint, meaning that you can give these files custom columns as well. And they'll even show up in Teams too. Super cool, right? Now go ahead and bring your SharePoint to the next level. Good luck!